Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm so grateful you're here with me today. And welcome to Art Exploration with Jessica from Color Me Creative, Kelly from Kelly Chassis Fine Art, and me from Indigo Jade Art, where every month in 2020, we are taking a deeper dive and exploring a new color. All three of us met as online teachers, and we just love teaching and exploring new mediums. In March, all three of us are highlighting the color aquamarine and all of its beautiful hues. You can also participate in our monthly challenge and dive in a bit more with us in our private Facebook group. The link to join is listed below. Okay, let's dive in and talk a little bit about this beautiful blue hue. I just love it. I love all the colors, but for this month, we're going to talk about aquamarine and we're going to have some fun making this loose floral blue iris. So here's some small versions of it and we're going to paint this larger version and kind of talk through the colors together. I have a special bonus this month with a free download and an art print of the project that we're going to make together. So the link is listed down below. Just go ahead and head on over and download it for yourself. Okay, so let's talk about these beautiful blue hues and a couple of my favorite brands. So I have two watercolor pencils here because I'm sharing that today as well. I have a Karen Dosh watercolor pencil and I also have my favorite, which is the Albert Durer uh, watercolor pencils. The cobalt teal color in those two brands make the most beautiful blue color. It's got that sea glass look to it, which is perfect for aquamarine, very sea glass. Okay, so this is Daniel Smith Manganese Blue Hue, and I also used this color in last month's art exploration. I really like this blue version from Daniel Smith. It's a little bit more on the cerulean side, but it's a beautiful blue hue. Now, here is the star of the show today. This is the Core watercolor brand, and this is Cobalt Teal. I love this brand because it does some really, really fun things and I'm gonna talk about it in a little bit. It has its own binder called Aquazole that makes it kind of unique and a very different watercolor. And I'm gonna get into that when we do our project together. Okay, this is Cascade Green. And I know it's a green and not aquamarine, but I promise you it's gonna be a fun color to talk about. So this color ha is a granulating color, but when it, you add water to it and it dries, this turquoise like aquamarine hue comes out in the color and it's just gorgeous. And we're going to use it in our project today along for the blue irises. And it's just going to be so much fun. I want to show you this close up. Look at the blue sea glass like granulation there and the hue coming through in this cascade green this is a wild card color and a fun find and really fun to play with okay here's another wild card that i threw in the mix here and this is dr ph martin's radiant concentrated radiant watercolors i really really love this color turquoise blue also ice blue but ice blue is a little lighter as you can see here i'm going to be using the turquoise blue in our project together so here is the lineup of colors that i'm going to talk about today and remember they're also uh, detailed in the free download that you can get from the link down below in the notes okay so let's go ahead and get started on talking about the supplies. So I wanna talk a little bit about the brushes that I use for loose water coloring. I have two examples here. I have a number 12 Princeton Elite brush. I really like this brush. It holds a lot of water. It's big, but it comes to a really nice fine tip and it also has a nice snap back. I have the Princeton Quill Neptune. Now quills are really, really great for these big washy, washy brushstroke effects. I'm gonna be using the number 12 round today. 
Okay, so now let's get into the technique for today's project. Now that we've talked about the brushes, let's talk about brush strokes. Now I want to show you the core watercolor cobalt teal. Look at this juicy, juicy color. It is a beautiful blue, but look at how that watercolor runs. That aquasol binder that's in that watercolor is very unique to this particular brand and it's really nice. I enjoy using the core watercolors for these kinds of techniques. Now, the brush strokes that we're going to be doing are very super loose and we're gonna let the brush do all the work. You can see how this brush comes to a really fine tip, but I'm warming up with just doing some really loose brush strokes back and forth with the number 12 brush. I'm dropping in a little bit of that core watercolor in that cobalt teal so that you can see how it just runs and spiders into the water. And it's a really, really fun watercolor for, these, for this technique. So you can see that our basic brush stroke for this entire project is really just letting the brush do all the work using the entire belly of the brush. So from tip to side to the whole belly of the brush and then back again to create these petals. Now I'm just playing around a little bit here and dropping in some of this cascade green so you can get a good sense of what that cascade green does when it changes colors. And look at the two together, that cobalt teal and that Daniel Smith cascade green. It's just beautiful, beautiful blue hues. Okay, so let's paint. Let's get started on painting this abstract, loose, super, super loose blue iris. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the shape of a blue iris before while I'm drawing it here. You can see that we have a larger petal that kind of comes out and down in front, and then we have two on the side, and then two to three at the top. So I'm loosely just sketching these shapes onto my watercolor paper, and I'm using a piece of B, Aqua B watercolor paper, just really simple for this project for play. Okay, I'm going to start out with the core cobalt teal watercolor, and you can see that I'm just using the entire belly of the brush and following the lines that I have put in my on the on the paper in pencil, and just doing these really super loose watercolor brush strokes. Now. This technique is really super fun. You can do this in your sketchbook. You can do it on some, on some watercolor paper that you have kind of scrap. This is a great way to get warmed up for any kind of project or painting that you're working on. These loose brush strokes really help you get your hand warmed up, get your mind and your body all ready to go to paint. And you can see that I'm just playing with this aquamarine and this cascade green and using the brush to make these large brush strokes. And this is a really simple way to create some beautiful flowers. Look at that cascade green. Look at the blue sea glass like hues that were coming out in that cascade green. Now I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit with between the cobalt teal, the cascade green, and I'm adding a little bit of that Dr. P.H. Martin's radiant watercolor, that turquoise blue, into the centers while the, the painting is still wet and just kind of letting it move. And I'm doing this technique right here. I call it brush dancing, where I just use the tip of the brush and I kind of move the color around and it gives it a little bit more texture, dimension, and graphic looks. So in the petals, it can start to help define some of the shapes a little bit and give it a little bit more of a graphic look and feel. Now I'm going back in also and adding some of that cobalt teal and just doing a little bit of glazing. The entire piece is still probably damp, just a little bit wet here. Instead of drying it in between, I'm just kind of playing with this whole composition, really super loose 
and just laying some colors in over top and just kind of brush dancing them in. So here's that brush dancing technique that I was talking about. I take the brush and go completely vertical with it and use the tip of the brush and just dance some colors in there and create those graphic lines. Now I'm going around with the brush completely clean so it's just got water in it and just um, softening the edges of the petals um, in these blooms and just letting those colors blend and mesh together and just kind of run and have some fun. So this is a really super simple way to use brush strokes to create a, an abstract look with your floral paintings. It's also just a great way to get warmed up, get your hands warmed up, and just kind of have some fun painting. Okay, I've got some Nickel Ozzo Yellow here that I'm just going to drop in. And this is the core brand of Nickel Ozzo Yellow. So you can see that the centers were just still a little bit wet. And the nickel azo yellow is just kind of spidering out into the water. That core watercolor just loves to move in the water. It's a really great brand for Lucy Lucy watercolor projects. I enjoy it very much. And I believe I enjoy that cobalt teal from core. There's lots of different brands of cobalt teal, but this particular one is just a really juicy color. And combined with that cascade green, oh, the beautiful sea glass look that you can create with these two colors is just gorgeous. So now I'm just kind of going in and playing around. I'm gonna dry the whole thing and then put some finishing details onto the whole painting. I'm just using a little bit of that cascade green to create some loose splatter. I've got some gouache here. I'm going to add a little bit of that water, wet that gouache down a little bit, and just kind of splatter it down all over the painting, just to add a little bit more of a loose finishing details to this really super loose watercolor painting. I'm loving these blue irises. They're very abstract and they're very, very loose and fun and free. And it's just been a real joy to paint with this color and just create these beautiful flowers. I am just digging it. I really enjoyed painting this and I'm offering it to you as a free download art print, this final piece that I had created and just kind of showing you here how you can modify this design and that brush stroke technique to create some cards. So this is sized to an A2 size for a card front. So this is super fun. Look at the how it's dried. The colors are just beautiful together and we've got a really nice, loose, abstract painting that was a lot of fun to create. You can do this. I hope you enjoyed today's art exploration tutorial. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel and head on over to Kelly and Jessica's channels to subscribe and watch their color exploration for this month as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.